Since the age of 18, I have probably moved about 20 times. But finding a place to rent in the UK, especially in London, is by far the most stressful experience. Now, today I am sharing with you all the processes and tips so that I could potentially save you some headaches. Hi ladies and gents, for those of you who's been here before, welcome back. But for those of you who are new, my name is Poppy and I have created this channel to share with you anything London, anything UK from an eye of someone who relocated here. As the title suggests, today we're going to be talking about rent in the UK and I'll add a few bits and tips about rent in London as well. So let's get right into it. Before you start this whole process, the very first thing that you need to do is ask yourself a couple of questions because the thing is, properties in the UK and especially in London do go quite quickly so it's handy for you to know what you want before you start searching the first thing that you need to know is what kind of properties you want to be renting for example do you need a garden do you need allocated parking space is off-road parking okay do you want a flat do you want a house how many bedroom which area you want to be living in and how far from the train station or the tube station or bus station you're going to be looking for you need to be able to answer all these questions before you actually start searching the next question will be what is your budget now I am an accountant myself and before I do anything I think about the money typical but budget is important because especially in London um, which I'll mention the reason later you might need to even pay a little bit more than you were looking for personally I wouldn't rent for more than 30% of my salary but I know that in London for example because properties are so expensive I do know some people that pay up to 40% but bear in mind that apart from rent itself you are also going to be paying for other stuff which kind of add up your monthly bills um, if you want a guide price I actually have a video of cost of living in London that should be helpful for you to kind of like work out your budget I know it's London specific in that video but if you're looking to rent elsewhere outside of London that video could potentially also be helpful to give you a good guidance of prices in the UK to add into your budget consideration please also be aware that there are going to be some upfront costs when you find your property for example there are going to be agency fees so that includes the fees for reference check um, admin fees of the agency also there will be non-refundable deposit I think that's everywhere in the world where you are going to look for a run in the UK the refundable deposit is calculated as it stands as five weeks rent so be prepared to pay that also just to mention if you are going to look for rent in a big city I know London for certain, you will probably be asked to pay for a holding deposit just to take the property out of the market. So, you know, be aware of all these costs that you are potentially going to have to pay. Now, when you know what you want, here comes the juice, the searching process. I feel like this is the fun part, by the way. I'll be leaving all the links of the websites that I have used to search property and website that I know down in the description box. When you search for the properties for renting, make sure that you read everything very carefully, you know, and compare that against what you had in your criteria or your checklist in terms of the area, in terms of, you know, what the property has. Right move, for example, do have a map on there as well. So make sure that you check on the map and that you're happy with the location. You're happy with the distance of that property to the nearest public transportation point. Do all that before you actually arrange for viewing so that you won't waste your own time. Now, once you find your perfect property, great but here comes the most difficult part that I've found especially if you are going to rent in big cities like London Manchester or Birmingham you are probably going to be asked to put down an offer at this point some of you might be thinking what basically in London if you're looking for rental property on the website there'll be a rental price stated on the website however that price isn't final as you know the property are always in demand in London so one property are gonna have loads of people looking at property and wanting that property so what the landlords do is the landlord would want 
everyone who wants to rent this property put down an offer of how much they are willing to pay and the landlord will be picking a tenant on that basis now in terms of like how much over the listed rental property price that you want to be putting offer down for is a bit of a tricky answer because it all depends on first of all how much you can afford and then it also depends on how desperate you are and whether how much you like the property i would say between one and a half percent and i would say maximum of four percent from the original listed price as an offer now if your offer has been accepted by the landlord congratulations and the next process will be reference checking now if you just move from another country to the uk this reference check process can be a little bit tricky because you haven't built enough credit score in the uk if you want me to do a video about how i built my own credit score when i first moved to the uk please comment with yes at the comment box below and then i'll squeeze in a video for you now the reference check could take a couple of days but once you pass the reference check the next step would be having to pay for the refundable deposit which i mentioned before that is calculated as right around five weeks rent now when you pay for this deposit i would like to emphasize that you should make sure check with the agency or the landlord make sure that it is held by the deposit protection service the deposit protection service is a scheme granted by the government that protects the tenants deposit so making sure that your deposit is held under dps you can ensure that you can get your deposit back regardless I once moved out from a property and the landlord refused to refund me my deposit because he said that the cost to fix the property for the wear and tears that I caused was going to cost him a couple of thousands of pounds. I then dispute that to the DPS scheme and guess what? I got most of my deposit back. So that is just how important it is to make sure that your money is held under DPS scheme. Guys, as always, I do hope you find this video helpful and if you do, please give video a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell as well so you don't miss any future uploads in regards to London, UK, any tips and tricks I may have. Thank you very much for your time and see you next time. Kofkin ka.